today I have the pleasure of listening to and breaking down one of my subscribers' tracks. He's also a patron, and his artist name is Altered Perception. So we're going to listen to his track, Underscore, from his 2003 EP, Rusted Shut. So I want to thank him for sponsoring this video. We're going to listen to the whole song together, and then I'm going to break it down. And I would say it's got a little bit of influence from Nine Inch Nails. Curious to hear what other influences you hear as you listen to it. All right, so my thoughts on the key that this is in, um, I think it most closely resembles uh, a Dorian scale. And let's find this. This is the main note, which is uh, maybe it's B, B flat. It's like the lowest note I can eke out. Then there's a variation when we go to the A chord. I like how this melody was sort of interweaving between the vocal lines. And I was really surprised how well they worked together instead of like stepping over each other. Because sometimes there was actual overlap, but I felt like there were these two great hooks 
Uh, but when the vocal was happening, I wasn't distracted by the this melody. But when the vocal wasn't happening, I had something really nice to sink my teeth into. Um, it's very pretty. And the bass is doing... Um, and this is like the, the fifth of the scale. It has this really strong, stable foundation that it creates. So there's the B minor chord, and then there's the A major chord, and then the surprising E major chord, and that brings in the Dorian sound I was hearing. And also his vocal melody did too. Um, but this is a really great Dorian chord progression that you can take and make something new with and you can reorder the chords pretty much any way you like and it should sound pretty nice um, it's just really nice that the warmth of that major chord is a little bit uh, again sort of unexpected but very welcome when it happens then his vocal da 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 that also has the special note in it that makes Dorian different than its most closely resembling scale of minor. It's the sixth note in the scale and it's a half step higher than it would be in minor. So instead of It's gonna go Right there. I just go down. My eyebrows go down. So you can hear it there. Da, 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 da. And then da, da. I need to listen to it again. Oh yeah, we got to talk about this first chord though, because I think maybe a higher version of this chord was happening later on in the song and I didn't notice it at first and then suddenly my attention went there and I was like really into it. Words are just that and have always been Actions no longer reflect within Actions no longer reflect within Okay, so we have uh, Great melody writing. It has a nice balance of, um, I don't know what to call this, but when you do it, da, 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 it almost feels like you're surrounding a note. It has that like feeling of like, da, 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 da. like an ornamentation really almost, but I just like that like shape, that contour. And then, da, 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 and you get that Dorian sound. And then, da, 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 da. there's something super pretty about that. Um, da, 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 da. I think it's that note, especially because it makes so it's the ninth. That's such a beautiful thing. It's a whole step up from the bottom of a chord. The ninth is a whole step above the root of a chord. So if you're playing an E chord, a whole step up from that is F sharp. So da. it's really pretty. And it works for minor chords too. Oof, so pretty. Um, so I really like that. And then... The drums have some something cool going on with the snare, I feel like. You have the hi-hat on the, keeping the subdivisions. And I think the kick is maybe going, mm, 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 mm. so there's a nice anticipation on the second one. But then the snare, I think, is also on some kind of offbeat. Let's see. Like the shadow in a yeah. Film. Okay, so here's the beat. It's going. So that first one's normal. 
The second one is like late. That's that feeling. But it creates this really cool um, instability that I think keeps you on your toes. That's a good tip, by the way. If you're making a beat and you always put the snares on the or if it's like fast, you're like try making one of them early or late. Just one. Just try one. You don't want to you don't want to completely collapse your structure. <laughs> you're right. It's like playing a Jenga. You want to remove just one thing so that it doesn't all fall apart, but it changes things. So we have an interlude. Okay. Oh yeah, this is cool. Uh, I meant to mention this synth. It sounds like a synth, but there are moments where it feels like an electric guitar. I really like it when an instrument sort of cosplays as another one. Uh, and I can hear that pitch bend, very expressive. So this is a cool way of maybe putting two verses next to each other without going to the chorus right after the first verse. That can be a very effective song structure. Another thing to notice, he he gave the uh, he gave this synth instrument the vocal melody, at least for that last part. Sing everything I want to hear more. Oh yeah, variation. So another great instinct on his part is that if he repeated the vocal melody for the second verse exactly the same way, and the only thing that changed was the lyrics it might have started to feel a little bit stale or like overly repetitive. So just in the nick of time, you know, he probably felt that urge time for some change. Doesn't have to be a big change though, but um, instead of going da 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 What is it? Hang on. And more. He goes up instead. And then... But the look in your eyes and underscore. And I wonder if maybe that's why we haven't gotten that chorus yet, is because he just said the title of the song and it's right right at the the end of the second verse, right? So it sort of feels like it's it's now time. All right, here comes the chorus. And I remember the timing being very interesting. Like there's a lot of uh, syncopated emphasis. Okay, there's a lot of layers here. So let's first just listen to the bass, which is sort of doing the roots of the chords, I think. Also listen to this. Uh, hear that buzzy. And it suddenly started to swell out of nothing. And it's that's the like riser that, that connects the end of this verse into the chorus. So it gives you, it's a transition. And it's, it's a nice one. I noticed that. Um, okay, so. All right, we got this. Okay, so it goes. If we gave all of these chords, we'd have, um, no, sorry, uh, it starts with, okay. He didn't play them like that. Um, I think it sounds more like the bass is doing the roots and then the -na 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 synth is now in constant movement rhythmically and is has some kind of melodic line that um, we need to look at. Let's see. Um, I think it's 
kind of the same notes, but just instead of having that hook of da 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 da, da it's like, you know. I'm not exactly sure. And I'm not going to take the time to figure it out because it is, it would take a lot of stopping and starting. And I don't think we need to go into that level of detail. The vocal melody. Okay, so it kind of follows the bass at first. Then they split up. You get that really nice resolution onto the major chord. Um, his voice is telling you that that chord's major. Also, it's always been major because of that Dorian sound. It's so pretty. Then, I like how definitive that sounds because it's very, you know, we're, we're meandering around. We've left home base, which is B, and we're going all over the place, but not returning home, right? And then our old friend comes back. It feels really nice. Um, last verse. Production sounds similar to the second verse. Oh yeah, and then is there a guitar? I like that variation as well. It does sound like a guitar, right? Vocal harmony. He's gonna do it again. And now the the synth melody gets louder. I really like that. I didn't notice that before. It gets louder in the second repetition. This is also a good songwriting structure tip. Is you know his chorus it wasn't repeated before. You know he sang the chorus one time. This is now the second time he sung it, and uh, he I think rightly so repeated it. A, a third time right after the second rep because it really feels like if he didn't we probably wouldn't have gotten enough of the refrain right the refrain is arguably where the focus is really all supposed to be on or or that the other elements of the song are sort of supporting the refrain so it's it's nice to get like a double length chorus at the end if uh if you can <laughs> Bringing it back to the beginning. That chord again. Please follow Altered Perception on all the streaming platforms. And also he has a YouTube channel called Perceptes. And if you like modular and are particularly interested in how, um, how do I put this? Tracks are made on the fly. Um, they're more of electronic jams. Um, he has some really cool, like, here's how I made this videos. He's an excellent teacher. He's taught a bunch of my patrons how to use VCV Rack. And he's a, just a very valuable member of my community. So please give him some love. Thank you so much for watching this. I'm really excited to be able to showcase more of y'all's music on my channel. It's a long time coming. So I will see you in the next video. See ya.